Beach Sands, June and July 2020. This is the Bearskin Bay Seine. Here we are at Queen Charlotte. And we're just out in front of the library and there is a very big eelgrass meadow. A lot of fish live in eelgrass. This is a good habitat for many of the fish that our coho and chum salmon like to eat. So we're going to look in here and see what kind of fish that we can find in here. It's raining today, but that doesn't bother the fish because they're wet already. So we can see that it's a little bit muddy in there and there are some rocks around as well and lots of eelgrass. It's like a forest for the fish. So we have a really good look around and I noticed some things in there. They looked a bit like jelly sacks. There were three different kinds of ones in there, so I had a closer look and I discovered they were actually egg sacs that a fish has laid on the eelgrass. So we know that some of the fish will lay the egg sacs, eggs on the eelgrass so that they don't float away. Here's Erin. She looks all ready to tell us what's going on. Yep, she's ready. So she's telling us that we're going to take the net around and make a little semicircle and pull it into shore and all the creatures will get caught in that semicircle of the net. So when we bring the net into shore, we take our little nets and we're going to gently scoop underneath of the fish and pick them up and then we're going to take them over to the bucket and gently put them in the bucket. And we're not going to keep them too long because we don't want to stress them. Are we going to take our net and slop down on top of the fish? No, we're not. Are we going to take our net and swish across? No, we're not. Are we going to take our hand and go funk on top of those fish and grab them? No, we're not. Take your net under the fish, pick it up, put it in the bucket, and that's that. Now we're taking the net off of the stretcher. And you'll notice that on top of the net there are floats. This keeps the top of the net on top of the water. And then down on the bottom there's a very heavy lead line. This keeps the net down on the bottom so that when we take the net around we trap the fish and they don't escape because we really want to see what's in there. We do this every year so that we can look and monitor what's still living in there and whether it's still a healthy system or not. So we get the net a little bit untangled. Aaron's going to feed it out and Brad is going to take it out. He's going to go out quite a ways but not too far because he will get lots of water in his waders. And it's very, very heavy because of that lid line. And when it gets wet, it's heavy, still heavier still. So we need somebody strong out there, like Brad, to pull it around. Now we don't pull the top of the net around the where the floats are. We actually pull the bottom of the net, the lead line, so that that bottom part of the net comes first. Now Brad's just in the edge of the eelgrass over there. And he's going to start pulling it in closer to shore and come this way and make that big semicircle. Now Aaron is going to start pulling the bit net in because we want to bring it in as close as we can, but not out of the water because we know that the fish need the water. Now the tide is actually coming in so that when we're looking at the fish, the tide isn't going out and then leaving them without any water. So we're pulling it in closer again closer and closer and closer and as we get a little bit closer to shore if we watch did you see that oh did you see that we know that we've got some fish in there you can see the bottom of the net coming and there are fish in there so now we're going to have a really good look and see oh we can see a sea cucumber and a crab, and some, oh, they look a little bit like eels or like snakes, but they're not, they're fish. So Erin's now going to go and get this one because it's out of the water right now. So she's quickly going to pick that one up and put it in the water, and it's okay because it's swimming around pretty good. So you can see how carefully that she's scooping underneath to pick up the fish. Oh, there's a pipe fish. So she pulls the net around so that she doesn't squish anything. Yep, that's how you do it. 
Now this guy was a bit big for the net, so she had to use her hand, but we're going to let Erin do that because she knows what she's doing. She's pretty clever. She's even scooping sideways under, but she's doing it so carefully. We have to remember to be very careful when we're scooping up the fish. Because if we bang them on the head, we could hurt them. And we don't want to stress them too much. We don't want to stress them at all. They're swimming pretty happy in there. If it was a hot day, we would keep changing the water around in the buckets too. Oh, Brad, quick! There's a shrimp! Get it! Oh, oh! Too quick. But you can get this guy. What's this one? Oh, there. Nice shiner perch. Oh, Erin got a few things in that one. What's she picking up here? Ah, we'll see. I've got pictures later on to show you all of the things that we caught here in Bearskin Bay. Oh, good scoop, Erin. Well done. Good job. Now she's got something different. Oh, that's interesting. That's very green. Hmm. Oh, there's one of those egg sacs that's come off of the eelgrass. Oh, now that's interesting. Can you get it, Brad? Oh, a bit too quick for Brad. Erin got it. Now the fish that are there, we're going to pull the net back out into the water. We've got all of the different types that we can get. We don't need to get every fish out of there. We just want to know that we've got the different types of fish. So we're pulling it back into the water again, back out into the water, and then we're going to shake it off really well so that all of the fish are back in the water and they're not getting hurt. And then we pack the net back up on the stretcher. And if we see anything that's still stuck on the net, we'll take it back out in the water and we'll shake it again. But there were no fish that died in this because we were very careful. We want to take care of our fish. So if we look in the buckets, we can see that we got a lot of different things. And in the other bucket, oh, nice. So now I'm going to show you the pictures of the things that we got. Like this coho smolt and a crescent gunnel and another crescent gunnel. We got lots of different types of crescent gunnels. And a pen point gunnel. That's the green one that Erin got. This is a Pacific snake prickleback. You can see why he's called a prickleback. Look at those fins got all the prickles. And a staghorn sculpin. That's the same one. Just wanted to show you what's on the gills. Now this is a different staghorn sculpin. And this is another sculpin. And a padded sculpin. And another type of sculpin. And a silver spotted sculpin. He's very different. A juvenile white spotted greenling. It's a party! We have a three-spined stickleback and a speckled sand dab. There's another speckled sand dab and another speckled sand dab. If you go down to the beach, you can see a lot of them in the, in the sand. A shiner surf perch. This is a bay goby. It's the same one just on its side. And then we caught lots of different shrimp. So they're all known as pandalid shrimp, but they're different types of pandalid shrimps. This was that big one that Brad was trying to catch. He finally got it. You can see how different they all look. This one's called a stiletto shrimp. Do you think you know why it's called a stiletto? Look at that sharp bit there. Oh, here's a kelp crab. Very yellowy. Here's one of those egg sacs that we were looking at. And this is the other one that was detached from the eelgrass. We also found this little jelly called 
was about the size of a dime. It's called an orange striped jelly. And a California sea cucumber. So we had different crescent gunnels, lots of shrimp, and lots of sculpins. This is that bay pipefish. There's related to the seahorse, and the male of the pipefish carry the eggs just like the seahorse do. This is an eelgrass isopod, like a bug. This is some of the sampling equipment that we use. The next week, we went to Gray Bay and did a seine there. You can see that the tide was way out. And the eelgrass is actually quite a ways out into the water. So this time, we're going to have to use the entire net. And you can imagine how heavy that that's going to be. Aaron and Brad have to try and tow it out. And they go out quite a ways, and they're just on the edge of the eelgrass out there. There's also other seaweed out there as well. So they're going to do the same thing and make a semicircle and pull in the bottom of the net. And they're going to be pulling in some of the fish. The fish will get trapped in that semicircle of the net. And again, we're not going to take it out too far. If it comes out too far in and there's no water, then we'll pull it back out into the water. And the tide is coming in, so they're not going to get left way high and dry. The tide's going to come in to us. Oh, Erin's got one. She found one. So there's lots of fish actually hiding in that seaweed. We can't see them. We have to sort of move the weed around. It was a bit harder to find the fish this time. But look at this. What are they? It's a whole bunch of shiner surf perches. Here's one. He seems to like my foot. So we didn't need to get all of them, but we picked this one up. Beautiful yellow stripes, eh? So there's a gunnel fish. Ow, it took off into the weed. I couldn't find that one. It hid very well in all that seaweed. But I did find this. It's quite a big speckled sand dab. Oh, there's a big fish. It took us a while, but we finally were able to get it, and we found out that that was a Dolly Varden trout. And then there's this little guy. Oh, he's just swimming. Oh, he's out. There it is. Quit. Get under it. Get under it and pick it up. This was interesting. These are called poachers. And we think that these are warty poachers. They look incredibly interesting. I thought it looked like a bit like the Night Fury out of How to Train Your Dragon. No wonder. Toothless. So sometimes it's really hard to catch the fish. I'm trying to scare one over into Erin's net. See if she can get down and get it. Yes, she did. Told you she's clever. It was another Dolly Varden. What a beautiful green color. There it is in the bag so that we can see the scales and the spots. So sometimes they hide in the sand, these fish. Erin, help me here. Ah, we got this guy. Oh, he looks a bit funny in the bag. So we measured him, and it's a staghorn sculpin. It's pretty big, too. Oh, Erin's done a big dip there. And she found another kelp crab. Only this one's red. The one we found in Bearskin Bay was yellow. Sometimes the fish stick to the net, so we have to be very careful to get them off. Oh, we got another silver-spotted sculpin. These fish are really interesting-looking. We also got another isopod. So, when we finished getting all the fish we could, and the tide was coming pretty quick, so we shook off the net, got all the weed off of it, picked up the buckets and took them into shore. If this was a hot day, we would have to make sure that we kept changing the water, because if the fish get too hot, they would die, and we don't want them to die. So all we did was pull them into shore, so, and then picked up the net, and then we took all the pictures that we needed to get. So we wanted to keep the fish safe and get them back in the water as quick as we could. So once the net's packed up and on the stretcher, it's time to pick it up. And it's really heavy. You can tell it's really heavy. It's got water and sand in it. Takes some pretty big muscle to get that back into shore. 
but they did it. Hey, thanks for watching. See ya, bye.